It is so great that you're watching this video. In this video, I will show our progress we have with FireRender for GPU. Keep in mind that this is a technology preview video and everything you see in here might show up in the final product or not. Before we dive into FireRender for GPU, I would like to start with the uh, renderer options that are available within 3D Studio Max. And this is Manta Ray. And as you might know, Manta Ray also comes with a GPU renderer called iRay. And what I want to show you in here is how we think a GPU renderer should work and how we care about workflow and how a GPU renderer should be integrated. So first of all, let's do a rendering. And as you can see here, we have a pretty simple scene. One object here and one material. It's the car paint material. And as you can see, this is standard manta ray car paint material. This is applied on the object and we are using manta ray as our main renderer. As you can see here, just bring up this dialog here we have Manta Ray as our main renderer. So let me just start the rendering so that you see what I'm talking about. Okay, as you can see here right now, we have our nice car paint material rendered with shadows, everything. So pretty simple setup, pretty easy scene. All is fine, looking great. So um, now let's turn on or switch to our GPU renderer in uh, 3D Studio Max, that would be, we go to our active shade and there we have um, used, or we're using NVIDIA iRay. So that's the GPU renderer. And now I'm going to activate our active shade and let's have both uh, renderings next to each other. And as you can see, our GPU rendering is really lightning fast, it's great. It's one of the fastest rendering. Um, the only problem is you don't see anything. And that's exactly our point we are making with our fire render for GPU. We are, we are working so hard for you to get a really transparent, unified uh, user experience when you use a GPU renderer or a software renderer. Right now with the inbuilt rendering system in 3D Studio Max, you cannot render a, a standard simple scene with iRay. It's just not possible. Even when you use, as we did here, the materials and scenes that come with the product. And another important point I want to point here is, you see everything is uh, turned off. So no more materials, no more material preview. And I cannot render, I press the render button here. I can't render again. So as long as active shape is open, I cannot render with Manta Ray. For whatever reason, it's not possible with the built-in rendering system. Now let me show you how a file render workflow would look like. I'm going to close all the scenes and load uh, the same scene, exact same object with file render. So I'm going to load the same scene with our fine render materials and our final render renderer. So we're using our fine render car paint material and I'm doing exactly the same steps. I'm going into our material setup. It's now fine render. That's the difference. And in fine render, I'm going to just press the render button. We will get our car paint, car paint material with flakes, with the reflections, refraction, everything in here just rendering like that. And now I'm going to switch like I did with Manta Ray. I'm going to switch to active shade mode and I'm now rendering active shade as well. And as you can see, we are now able to have both uh, renderers active here. And if I'm going to change something in the viewport, for example, let me just go in here in the viewport, you will see that our uh, renderer is actually interactive and we get real time car paint, a real time car paint shader, as you can see here. 
our renderer will not update because it's a software renderer. It takes its time to render. So I have to press render button and it will update our rendering and render again. And as you can see, we can do already something that no other renderer does right now. Manta Ray does not allow you to have active shade open. It will refine and render and keep on rendering in the background. And we can still access our software renderer at the same time. So we can adjust materials. We can adjust everything we want. Uh, let me just adjust the, the specular levels, uh, for example. And as you can see, let me just overdo it a little bit. You see here changes. Uh, we can adjust the, the flakes, we can increase them. As you can see here, we can adjust the flake scale. Now we have very big flakes here. Let me just turn them down so we get them more stronger. So we have the possibility to actually adjust everything here in real time. Here we get our real-time update. Our software renderer can't get the real-time update. So I have to press render. We will invoke our software rendering. And as you can see, our results are pretty close and we're still working on it. We are going as uh, identical as possible here. But I just wanted to show you, we are still working on enhancing the user experience. And we really think we are onto something here and we can deliver the best GPU renderer on the market that will create the best possible image quality. And again, very important for us, the workflow, the experience, it's just continuous. There's no break in it. Like you saw on the mental ray side, you suddenly get a black picture. You have to model special, you specialize and blah, blah, blah. None of that is, is uh, needed with Fire Render for GPU. I hope you enjoyed this one and just check out our other videos as well.